camping chairs are associated with the outdoors, fresh air, open fire and a strong cup of tea. So I can think of worse things to be compared to. But if you need a basic racing cockpit that's quick to set up and put away, is surprisingly sturdy, breathable, compact and easy to get in and out of, then maybe this is what you've been looking for. The Playseat Challenge. This portable cockpit is a jack of all trades, but a master of clever compromise, perfectly suited to entry level wheels like the Logitech G93 seen here. Whilst it can only do so much, it ticks an awful lot of boxes if you need something sympathetic to your living space, though not always sympathetic to your face, as I found out. Let's take a look. Just briefly before diving in, much like all my other videos, there are links in the description below on places to buy. If you do go on to choose the Place Seat Challenge, then using those links to do so supports this channel at no additional cost to you, so thank you for using them. It comes in a fairly compact box, so if you're picking one up in person, then you won't need to worry about not fitting it in the back of your Fiat 500. Assembly is pretty easy, and it won't take you very long provided you follow the instructions dutifully. We're talking a maximum of 15 minutes from opening the box to sitting in it. I'm pairing it with a Logitech G923 in this review, and assembly is as simple as can be there. The G923's clamps can hold the wheel in place perfectly well, but you can use the bolts as well if you want, whilst the pedals are placed up against this metal backstop at the end of a pedal holder and then secured at the heel plate end with this heavy duty velcro strap. The cables and wires for your wheel can be velcro tied to the plate seat's frame as well, leaving you with an all-in-one racing seat and wheel with no loose flying cables that you can plug in and connect with minimal pain. During testing, I could unpack the plate seat in 40 seconds and pack it away in the same amount of time. To go from stashed away to sitting in it in under a minute is just excellent. You do have to undo the wheel plate and angle it to store it flat, and it also means you have to put it back into position when setting up, but it's just one hand screw and quickly done. The Velcro straps that hold the frame together in its folded state are advised, but not mandatory. So if you're sticking it in a closet or cupboard or leaning it up against a wall, then that 40 seconds could become more like 15. Getting in and out of a seat is easy because the entire wheel support swings up and to the side. I was really impressed with how simple it is to just pick up and get going with it. In my eyes, portability means nothing if it's complicated and this isn't. I like it. Just try to pay attention when you're folding or unpacking, otherwise you might catch a Logitech to the face. As this is a soft back chair which is quite a low slung relaxed position, it's fairly comfortable on the whole. Both the wheel deck and the pedal tray are adjustable, the wheel deck can be brought closer to you by a good few inches, though you need to undo some bolts to do this, that's not practical to do mid-session, but the pedal tray has bags of forwards and backwards range that can be adjusted by loosening these two thumb screws and sliding it back and forth, that's much easier. This surprisingly wide range means that it's suitable for young drivers all the way up to full adults, so if you're sharing the play seat between the family then it shouldn't be an issue. The fabric cradle of the seat holds you well, it's a sunken position that makes you feel quite low down and nestled within, not plonked on top. There is an adjustable velcro strap to add more back support, another directly underneath your hips, and another under the thighs. So if you want more or less support around those areas, then you do have some choice by tightening those up, but they're tweaks at best, and ultimately you can't do much about the profile or ergonomics of the seat. The breathable fabric, made from what Playseat is labelling ActiFit, helps combat the heat and sweat, especially in the summer. Sticking a fan behind you and getting that precious airflow to your back and bum is going to be very welcome. I'd way, way sooner be racing in something made of this than cloth or leather. I'm around 6 foot and whilst I find that I would definitely like to have another centimetre or so of distance between me and the wheel if I could. The pedals can actually be positioned beyond my reach, so there should be little trouble if you're a full grown adult. I've got a 36 inch waist and I can fit in the seat. Weight wise, I'm over 90 kg and it doesn't make me feel like it's going to collapse on me even if I plonk myself into it quite lazily. There's a 120 kg limit according to play seat, so it should cover everyone who has less than one Big Mac a day. When it comes to sturdiness, it's better than appearances would suggest. I would describe it as sturdy enough to forget about when you're driving. Yeah, if I wiggle the wheel plate for you, it will move around quite a bit and so does the pedal arm to a degree, but when I'm driving, I don't really notice it 
I feel adequately connected to what's on screen to just get on with it. And you can only really do that if you're convinced that it's not going to fall apart. It's sturdy enough to be well matched to the sub 300 quid entry level wheels that are going to be most commonly found on it. Your Logitech G29s and G93s, Thrustmaster T128s and T248s. The Logitech pedals you see here have been modified with an AXE SIM True Brake module, so they're actually much stiffer than stock, and my leg is pushing much harder in them, and yet the challenge holds them down well enough that I can still get into my groove, hit my braking zones, and put the laps in well. And at no point do the wheels and pedals budge or give way from their set positions. Whilst I'm aware that the cockpit's not holding things rock solid, I do find myself largely forgetting that I'm in a fully foldable cockpit. Sure, if I was attaching something more serious onto it, then such movement would become unacceptable, but that would be a case of mismatched hardware. You can't go put in a V8 engine into a Renault Clio and then complain that it's not up to the job. It should go without saying that this is a starter cockpit best matched for starter wheels. For context of where I'm coming from here, if you're new to my videos, I'm all about serious sim racing. This is what I'd normally be using, and as I give the play seat challenge a test, I like to think I can tell the difference between bad design and design limitation. To me, the challenge does a lot of things very well, considering it's got a fold away conveniently when you're done, and it's sturdier than I expected it to be. Of course, it's never ever going to be as sturdy as a fixed rig, but you can't stuff one of those into the cupboard in under a minute. So what if you decide it's not for you? Does the challenge seem to hold its value or is it impossible to sell on? Whenever I research this question, I head to eBay's sold listings. From what I'm seeing, they do sell and for about 50 to 75% of their original value, but it does vary. Cockpits can be tricky to sell secondhand because of their bulk, but the placey is 100% possible to post provided you retain the original box. That takes a lot of hassle out of it, and it's surely easier to buy and sell them as a result. So what are the things you might find annoying about this placey? Well, there are no major annoyances that stick out, only minor things to keep in mind in the context of what it is and what it's supposed to be. The pedals sit flat on the floor, which means that it's a slightly odd angle when you're also low to the ground, but you could stick a chock of wood underneath it if you wanted extra tilt. The seat itself could be uncomfortable for a minority of people, and given you can't adjust the general posture, then if you don't get on with it, there's nothing you can really do. Overall, I can't really pinpoint anything that I could call bad design. For the most part, they've done quite well with the limitations of a folding cockpit. I find it easy to draw a conclusion on the play seat challenge because I can picture the exact kind of race that this would be absolutely perfect for. If you or someone you know really wants a racing cockpit to get into racing games and sims but absolutely cannot dedicate the space for a permanent setup nor spend a ton of money from the off, I would tell them to start here. However, I would personally say it is absolutely best paired with entry level wheels like Logitech and Thrustmaster wheels of the £300 and below mark. There are plenty of people happily using it with heavier duty Fanatec and Moser equipment, but whilst I wholeheartedly believe that they're making it work, I would say that they are definitely pushing the limits of the challenge and I wouldn't advise it as an ideal pairing if you're actually going to be going to fold and unfold the cockpit regularly. Of course, if you're using a challenge with a mid-level wheelbase and you're getting on with it just fine, let other viewers know in the comments, it can help them out considerably. Overall, I find the play seat challenge is sturdy enough to do the job it's designed to do, compact enough to be inoffensive when packed away, easy enough to set up to not be a nuisance, and just about cheap enough to be within reason. All being well, if you start on a play seat challenge, then you'll either go on to bigger and better things and look back on this as the cockpit that enabled your passion to flourish, or if you eventually decide racing's not for you, then you'll be glad you didn't overextend. I'd feel confident recommending it to casual, confined space racers. There we go. I hope this was an entertaining look and a review. Remember that links to buy are in the description. Clicking through those is a good way to support me without costing you anything. Leave a like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and cheers for watching.